Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For some reason, I never kind of did an introduction into these exercises or anything for this video. I just cracked on with it. So that's why we've got some random video of me doing Coop's girth up now so I can explain. Also, another heads up is that he hasn't been schooled in over three weeks. So when I kind of dragged him out and was like, come on, I need to video this, bring your A game. He kind of went, looked at me as if to go, I'm retired. Why are you still making me do this? So if he looks a tad grumpy, that is why. I love using poles and pole layouts to enhance my dressage sessions, get more out of them, improve my riding, my accuracy, my skill level, as well as helping and benefiting the horse. And also if you've got a horse, especially like I do with Corporal, who sours quite easily going in the school, somehow using poles just sweetens them up because they kind of don't realise they're doing a proper dressage session. Um, and you don't actually need tons of poles this can be so easily achieved and what's even better is it really doesn't matter what level your horse is at you could do this for prelim horses you could do this for grand prix horses you can adjust it to suit your you and your horse's ability um, and it just makes for a much more fun session so uh let's get cracking with a nice simple exercise halting between poles. It can be handy to put these poles at X or G where you're likely to halt in a dressage test. It's so easy to slightly miss the marker at X and G when it comes to a halt. There's a lot to think about when keeping the horse straight and this just helps you as a rider be that little bit more accurate. Make sure you do hit the marker or the poles in this instance. It helps the horse stay straight. If you've got a young horse that tends to sort of step out with the hind leg, which is quite a common thing, this just helps entice the horse to stay straight. You can have the poles quite narrow, but it just gets the rider thinking a little bit quicker about that halt and being a bit more direct about that transition down. This is such a brilliant exercise for teaching a horse to stay straight when reining back. If you have a younger horse or any horse, to be honest, who struggles to stay straight, which is really common, this just helps a horse to understand where they have to go. It's, you see it all the time, horses' quarters veering off in another direction. Um, it also helps the rider to feel a little bit more confident when doing the rein back, to help the rider stay straight as well. You must use soft poles through this, because obviously otherwise it would be very dangerous. If I had another go, I would probably add more poles along here just to kind of really help with the straightness. Um, but it's a brilliant exercise. Don't look at Corporal's rein back too closely. Not his strongest point. Um, the lazy so-and-so doesn't like picking his back feet up, but we'll let him off. He's retired now. He doesn't have to do it perfectly. To be honest, I had never done walk pirouettes in between poles until yesterday. It sort of just came to me while I was doing all these different exercises and it's very handy. It was brilliant for me. I tend to ride walk pirouettes too big i'm not very good at keeping them really contained and small so the poles made me have to sit up collect corporal that little bit more and make it small and not allow him to drift and fall through the shoulder corporal is not great at walk pirouettes he really struggles to sit and now that he's that bit older and i don't really practice them that much you can see we're not particularly good um but the poles stopped him from drifting it kind of made him conscious that he couldn't just sort of drift I used to do tests where you'd start on one line doing your half walk pirouette and then by the time you'd finished it, you'd find yourself halfway at the school and I'd be like, oh, I'm facing a whole different marker now. And you'd sort of have to sneakily leg yield back in, but really good exercise for horse and rider. This is one of these exercises that looks so easy and yet is so much harder than you think it's going to be. Setting two poles fairly far apart, practice your medium trot and canter in between them, making sure you get your horse back under control and collected by the second pole. Something easier said than done. Here you can see I open Corporal up for a lovely medium trot and then I have to get him back and sat on his hind quarters by the second pole. In a dressage test, it's really easy to lose marks if you open up for a medium canter and don't have them back by the marker you're meant to. So this is great for practicing that. Would be better on a bigger arena. I've got quite a little arena, so I would like more space ideally, but still really good exercise. Gets you thinking as a rider, being that little bit quicker, bit sharper and making sure you have your horse back by the marker. We tend to see simple changes come in around novice level dressage tests and then upwards. They can be quite tricky. You have to be very accurate and have a fair amount of control over your horse. Setting up two poles and making a sort of tram line to practice your simple changes in is a really good idea to help you as the rider be that little bit more accurate. Also for horses that maybe struggle with sort of falling out through the shoulder or the hindquarters, it helps to keep them that little bit straighter. 
It's also great for practicing those canter, tr canter transitions that you see around elementary level. Again, from an accuracy point of view, just making sure that you get the transition when you want it and not two strides before or two strides after. Riders schooling and competing at a higher level, maybe advanced, medium plus, who want to work on their flying changes, this exercise also suits that. It helps you to ride your flying changes nice and straight in between the poles so that you are accurate and you get them exactly on point, which is really important when you're competing at those higher levels. Um, me and Corporal aren't the best at flying changes, as you can see, but it's great to see that you can, I can get them in between those poles from an accuracy point of view. Moving on to the final exercise, and that is setting your poles out in a square. And now this can be done in 10 meters, 15 or 20, depending on what level you are working at. It is a great way to get your horse engaging their hindquarters, getting you making sure you're riding the outside leg, outside hand, don't lose the horse through the shoulder or the hindquarters. The poles will also help support your horse in that area. It's one of those exercises that looks easier than it is. You actually have to have a lot of control. It takes quite a bit of collection. And if you um, are somebody who wants to practice those 10 meter circles and making sure you've got the right size, make sure you measure the distance inside the square. I tend to build them on around 11 on the inside, just to give you that little bit of extra room. Obviously you don't want to make them too small. Um, you can do this in trot and in canter. I would recommend you don't do it for too long. So take plenty of breaks because it's quite a hard exercise for the horses to do. Like I say, the horses have to really sit and collect to stay on that circle within the poles, especially because they can't drift. So uh, yeah, take plenty of breaks. And here you can see I'm just practicing it in canter as well. But it really made me use my outside leg and outside hand to really support corporal and maintain that outside shoulder.